You see, you see, there are two types. Two types of petrol heads. You've got uh, idiots like this who like the Porsche 911, and you've got people like me who'd rather have anthrax than a 911 because I'm a Ferrari person. Yes, but when you actually owned a Ferrari, you couldn't leave it parked on the street, go out for dinner in it or anything because you spent the whole meal worrying about who was bumping into it or carving their name into its precious paint. That's true. I once left the roof off and it was so full of phlegm when I got back you could have swum home, but... Exactly, and therefore, as a result of that, it spent its entire life cowering at home in your garage, and when you were eventually brave enough to want to use it, by that time the battery was flat, it was hopeless. Yes, I know, but a, a Ferrari with a flat battery is an aesthetic thing. You can enjoy looking at it. That's the... Yes, but it's not moving. That's why I love the 911, because you can use it every day to go to places. It's a car. And now there's a new turbo version, which we asked him to drive in the hope he'd see the light. This is the biggest 911 turbo they've ever made. But it's still no longer than a Toyota Prius, no wider than a 3 Series BMW. And unlike a normal supercar, it doesn't have Marilyn Monroe hips, so it doesn't get stuck in multi-storey car parks. <laughs> What's more, it's not like threading through traffic in a post box. In a Ferrari, you can't really see where the buses are, so you can't carve them up. But in this, you can. In a Ferrari, you'd be forever worried about graunching the nose on a speed hump. But not in the 911. And it doesn't even harm the sky very much, either. It may have a flat six twin turbo engine, but it only produces 300 carbon dioxides. That's 100 less than you get from the back of a Ferrari 430. And if you drive this car through a really polluted city, Los Angeles, Calcutta, Harrogate, something like that, the gas coming out of the exhaust pipes is less toxic than the air going into the engine. And I'm not joking, that's true. This, then, is like a small, efficient, easy-to-use vacuum cleaner. They should have called it the Porsche Dyson. And it'll suck up your luggage, too, because, unlike any other supercar, its boot is easily big enough for your weekly shop. There is the peach and peacock, the cornerstone of any Porsche driver's Sunday lunch. And there's still room left over for the ice cream made from the bones of your defeated squash opponent. And you can use this car on the school run because it has back seats. I mean, obviously, you'd have to have fairly um, thin children, but then you would have because you've got a Porsche 911, so you'd have a thin wife. I will concede, then, that there's no everyday situation that flummoxes a 911 Turbo. And so, because you can use it every day, its battery won't be flat when the moment is right. And you fancy a drive. The new 911 Turbo has special variable vane turbochargers that always work, whatever the revs. You can even buy a special overboost facility which, for brief moments, can deliver 500 torques. That gives it a very muscly feel. And it's got a special new four-wheel drive system that doesn't allow any form of under- or oversteer. You just get so much grip that your eyes start to hurt. being in a capsule of speed. So, when the sun goes down, you can really get cracking. OK, let's engage the stability management programme and put it in sport mode. Let's change things a bit. Now, every time I turn the steering wheel, it feels like I'm drawing a line through the laws of physics. This is not driving. This is pure maths. So how does it compare to my beloved Ferrari?
Well, it has a smaller engine, but because of the scramjet turbochargers, it produces 480 brake horsepower, exactly what you get from the 430. But then this is lighter than the Ferrari, thanks to aluminium doors, which weigh just 11 kilograms each. It's also 20,000 pounds less expensive. Sure, it isn't as exciting as the Ferrari, it's more about engineering than passion, but I will admit, the end results are astonishing. Let me give you some performance figures. 0 to 60, 3.9 seconds. Top speed, near as makes no difference, 200 miles an hour. This is my favorite, okay? 40 to 60 in second gear. One second! One! It's amazing because it's not just more usable than a Ferrari, more practical, but I think out here in the real world with crests and dips and bumps and blind brows, I think it's faster as well.